you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! Thank you. Welcome all across America. This is Hot Seat, the one show that makes sure, makes sure the United States of America will now and always will be the number one. We are the one show on television across America standing up to these lily-livered liberals. I'll tell you, we're going to stand up for America, and as far as I'm concerned, we're going to make darn sure that Saddam Hussein is reduced to a pile of smoking ashes. Okay. okay, now, on the program tonight, we have a couple of really ludicrous idiots. We have this big mouth liberal Eddie Goodman down here. And he's trying to defend the slanted liberal news media. I say the news media is out to destroy the Bush presidency and hurt the country at the same time. And he says the news media is doing a very fair job. Baloney! We also have Jeff Tulcher here, the little twerp. He supports the Alliance for Survival, and he says, peace now with Iraq, bring our boys home. Oh. <laughs> Jeff Tulcher says, so what? Let, it, let Saddam Hussein have Kuwait, who cares? Oh, come on. I say, he's just another peacenik panty waste, right? Now, be, now, before we, we get into our opening commentary and so forth, let me introduce my great crew, our director in the booth, the very amazing Jeff Bingham, everybody. Let's hear it for Jeff. All right, Jeff. My producer is my very beautiful and talented wife, Janice George. Let's hear it for Janice. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, our, our floor director, the inimitable Steve Schaub. There's Steve. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, we have a couple of VIPs in the audience. First of all, I want you to say hello to a very dear friend of mine. I could say probably my best friend. Uh, uh, I've known him for years and years and years, along with, of course, Cal Brock, another dear friend of mine. But uh, here we have uh, a world-renowned author, political analyst, David Chagall. It's here for David. Yeah. David. Next to David, we have a man who's going to make it possible for this program to be seen next year in some 80 million homes across America from audio entertainment networks, Patrick Olmsted. That's it. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Today we have America, tomorrow the world. Yeah, we're working together with uh, Audio Entertainment Networks to get this show into 65% of the cable homes in America, reaching some 83 million people. Is that great or what? Yeah. Okay, it's good to see you guys down here. And, and also in the audience, stand up, you guys. We, we have a couple of guys from the Marine Corps. Let's hear it for them. Here. Yeah. These guys, uh, in a couple of weeks, are, are going off to serve in Saudi Arabia. Let's wish them well, okay? Yeah. 
Hey, God bless you both, and we're with you all the way. And don't don't worry. In, in just about a month or so, we're, we're going to go over there and bomb the hell out of those people. Yeah! And we're going to bring you guys home, and we're going to have our heads up high, right? Yeah! Okay. And now, everybody, hold it down, please, because it's time for my commentary of the night. Everybody pay attention, please. Well, folks, will the USA soon be the USJ, the United States of Japan? It is unbelievable to learn just how much of American business is owned by Japan. Countless hotels, office buildings, businesses, and stores. The most recent acquisition is MCA, purchased by Matsushita for $6.5 billion. Matsushita of Japan, of course. This is the largest largest takeover yet by a Japanese firm. MCA is the most diversified of the Hollywood entertainment conglomerates. Among its properties are Universal Pictures, Universal Studios, the Universal Studios Tour, a similar theme park in Florida, a publishing house, record labels, and interests in cable television and movie theaters, and now it's owned by Matsushita of Japan. On and on it goes. Not long ago, 60 Minutes on CBS did a feature on Japanese holdings in this country, and it was shocking to me to see just how much they do own of America. Most of the major buildings in Washington, D.C. are owned by the Japanese. Some of you may say, so what? I say, so plenty. The profits from all of these buildings and companies are going back to Japan, not staying here in America like it should. I say, how much longer will this continue? How much more of America will, Jap will the Japanese acquire in the next 5, 10, 15 years? I hate to see American businesses being sucked up one by one by one by one by the Japanese. It's sad and disturbing to me. It's, all, it's almost making you feel like we lost the war. I say, USA all the way! I'll be right back. Everybody. And for you people watching us here in Southern California, don't forget we're on the air every day, Monday through Friday at 3.30 with Hot Seat Highlights. I do a commentary for you every day, and then we show you some of the most outrageous moments from the past seven and a half years of Hot Seat! Okay. Now, if you're ready, are you ready? It's time for the mailbag! We have some ludicrous people who wrote to me. Here's a real idiot named Milton. Oh. And listen to this, to this brave idiot. He says, dear wimp. Oh. Hey, get this. He says, I am the president of the Saddam Hussein fan club. Oh. is I demand that you give us airtime on your miserable program. Oh. Hey, I'll tell you, Milton, I'll tell you what I'm going to give you. You can come on down here. I won't give you any airtime, but I will give you a big fat lip. Here's another brave soul named, named Jack. And he says, dear stupid. <laughs> he says, I don't like the way you tear up the letters that you don't like on your show on Saturday night. Uh, I, I love it when they do this. He says, you better not tear this one up or else. Oh. Jack, let me tell you, Jack, I'm really quivering in my boots, you know? Hey, this, hey, this idiot sends me a little postcard. Another, another brilliant person, Dear Walnut. Oh. 
And this is from Roland. And he says, I am a liberal pacifist. And I find your show very offensive. And I find you very obnoxious. What do you think about that? Well, I'll tell you, Roland. I find you to be a stupid jackass. Nobody messes with Mr. America! <laughs> finally, finally, we have a nice letter here. Comes from Eric, and, and he says, my name is Eric, uh, I won't give his last name, I never do. He says, I am a great fan of yours, been watching your show for almost six years. I agree with you, and I think Hot Seat is the greatest show in America! <laughs> We save the good ones and burn the idiotic ones. You know? Okay. So much for the mailbag. We have some questioners from the audience. Can I have my first questioner? Come on up, sir. Give me your name and your question, please. Go ahead. Hi, Wally. I'm Tom, and I'm wondering what you think about hunting and the activists who are following the hunters into the woods and screaming and yelling and distracting them. Yeah, and, and saying that hunting is horrible, yeah. horrible, it's murder. I say this is getting... You know, I love animals, but I say hunting is okay. If, if you hunt to eat your prey, if you hunt or fish, and, and you do that because you, you want the food, I say hunting and fishing is a great American sport. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Got your fan club here, okay? Hey, Roy. <laughs> okay, can I have your name? My name's Roy. Yeah, Roy. Uh, I was wondering what you think about that uh, female reporter who just filed that lawsuit against the NFL because she was discriminated against in the locker in room. In the locker room, okay. Right. Yeah, she got all upset because this female sports reporter went into the locker room and saw all these naked men and she got all the... <laughs> right. I say, if she doesn't like it, then let her get another job. Yeah! Okay, yeah. It's ridiculous. Yes, next. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Can yeah, I'm please? Andy from LA, and I want to know uh, what you think about the Metro Blue Line and the accidents that's been happening, and what you think of the subway that they're planning to build. Well, and and yeah. uh, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. I'm wondering, what are you going to run for mayor? Well, I'll tell you. If I run for anything, it'll be for president of the United States. <laughs> but, I'll, but I'll tell you, speaking about, about the subway system, once again, Mayor Tom Bradley has proved he's nothing more than a Looney Tune. <laughs> he wants to build a big hole, dig a big hole in the ground, hear earthquake questions. How would you like to be down in the subway, uh, way down in the middle of the, of the earth, in the middle of an earthquake? <laughs> I say Mayor Bradley is a stupid nut and he should be thrown out of office. Right on! Okay, yes. Hey, 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 Mayor Bradley, if you're watching, nothing personal. Okay, yeah, yes, go ahead. <laughs> Hey, Wally, my name's Joel, yes. and I was wondering how you feel about uh, Japan's involvement in the Gulf. Well, I, I think they should get, get involved a heck of a lot more. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, they keep buying up all of our businesses. Do you know that it is against the law for Americans to go over and buy Japanese firms? They don't let us do that. I say, let's have a little bit more free trade from the Japanese. Huh? Yeah. I'll be right back. Oh, oh. seat on a Saturday night, brand new hot seat every Saturday night, and uh, remember, we're tell your friends our eighth year here with you, and we'll be here for another 80 years! Yeah! No, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to blow my own horn. Normally, we make a big deal out of this, and we bring a cake out and everything, but uh, we're not going to do that this year. I'm just going to tell you that this happens to be my birthday today! Yeah! Okay. 
Would you believe? This, would you believe this is my 39th birthday? <laughs> again and again. Okay. Happy birthday to me. No cake this week. No big deal. Heck with it. But here we go. Now, before we, we bring on our first guest, one of our regulars here on the Hot Seat Show, let me... Uh, Remind you once again here in the Southern California area, join me on the radio every Monday night, our fourth year with KLAC, the Wally George Great American Radio Show, the former home of Joe Pine and Tom Duggan. We've been there four years now, every Monday night, taking your phone calls from 9 o'clock until 12 midnight. Join me this Monday and call me on the air on KLAC 570 on the AM dial. Now, here he is, the big mouth is back, Eddie Goodwin. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. I'm back and I'm when, and I'm mad. When are you gonna? I'm back and I'm mad. Hey, hey, hold on, Eddie. Eddie, when are you gonna? When are you gonna realize that every time you come on this show, you prove yourself to be a stupid loser? Well, when are you gonna realize, just like the rest of L.A. and the rest of this country already know that when I come here, it's my show. Oh. It's Eddie time. This is my show. That's right. I'm the star. I'm the star. I should be, I should be behind this desk. I'm better looking. I'm articulate. I mean, I should be behind that desk. What you doing over there? Give me this job. It's my show. It's my show. And everybody listen hey, the up because you place. might learn something, okay? Listen up because you just got to learn something. Hey, the only That's right. Let's go. Hey, the only place you're going to get a seat is in Lincoln Heights Jail. Yeah. <laughs> well, hold on. Woo, let's get to the, let's now get you to the know, topic. Now, I'm ready to kick some butt. Oh. I'm ready to, I'm hey. kick butt and take names later. Let's go. Listen, you stupid let's jackass. Go. I'm ready to kick some butt. Now, let's, let's What's go. your name? What's your name calling, jerk? Name calling. Uh, I haven't, I haven't, I never been, I haven't begun to call names, Charlie. Oh, hold on a minute. I haven't begun yet. Let's get down to a civil tone here. You are here to defend, of all things, to defend the slanted left wing liberal news media. That is so ridiculous. Wally. Now, how, okay, how in God's name, just because, how in God's name can you say the, the media is slanted to the left? First of all, how can I you say look it? at the top announcer, the top news uh, caster in Los Angeles, television wise, it's a known fact. Who's what, that? Jerry Dumpy. Is he the top newscaster in Southern no, California? No, he's not. No, he he's isn't? not. He no, isn't? He's not. No. Who's making more money he here? Who's making more money, Jerry Dumpy? I'm talking about. Who's making more money, Jerry Eddie, Dumpy? Eddie, I'm talking so about. What is he? Wait, he's a Republican. That's wait, a known fact. I know a fact. He's a Republican. Eddie, shut your mouth for a minute. Come on, now. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Shut. What I'm Planet. saying is, it's ridiculous. I'm talking about across the country, across the country, the news media slants the news against the Republicans, the, that the is conservatives. That's so ridiculous. Now, That's so ridiculous. Let me give you an example. <laughs> let me give you a perfect example, Eddie. Do you know that a recent survey made shows that almost 90 percent, if not more, of the members of the news media in this country are registered that is, Democrats? That is, that is ridiculous. That David, you call it not true? David, you call it Who, who took this photo? Republican Party or somebody? They admitted That's it. That's so ridiculous. Wait a minute. Who admitted it? They admitted it. No, they the admitted it. The members of the news media. First of all, they polled the news media. First of all, the media is just like. It, the media is just like everyone else in this country. And lately, it's the Republicans who've been winning all the elections. And the, uh, in spite the of media, the news media. The media in spite of the, the news media. The pop, they know different than the rest of the population. So for you to say no, wait the a media minute. What is the news media saying? Uh, what is uh, the Democrats news media doing? Hold on, Eddie. That's ridiculous. Hold on. Now, at, well, hold on. Now, as far as, hold on. Yeah, shut up now. Don't tell my audience. Shut up. Shut up. Don't tell my what to do. Hold on, hold on. Be quiet. Let, let an intelligent young let man speak. Let me tell you speak. something. Hold down, hold down. Hey, let me tell you how slanted and how biased and how dangerous. Okay, let me give you an example. I'm giving you an example right now. I'm the host okay, of this okay, show. Okay, my show. Give you a chance. Go on, Wiley. Oh, thank you so much. Now, I'm going to give you an example, and, and you can respond. Here's an example of their total uh, ludicrous behavior in trying to bring on a recession in this country. Should have bring on. We're already day in the recession. Wait a minute. We're in a recession right now hold, at this hold moment. On. Wait a minute, Eddie. The media didn't bring on anything. Day after day, day after day, I read in the newspapers, 
I hear on, on all the newscasts, on all the talk shows, I hear them saying, recession is here. We're going to have That's a... That's right. Uh, we're we're right a, in one. We're going to have right a terrible... Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And they say it's going to be a deep and lasting recession. Over and over again, they keep saying that. And the more they say that in the news media, the more they're going to scare the people in this country and the less they will spend. And then we will have a recession and we can blame the liberal news media. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That. First of all, it's not the media who's making these opinions on the uh, the economy. It's the leading economists who are saying that we are in a recession. They're just broadcasting no, they're what these people no, are saying. Not. The no, media they're... is not, are not. They are not making opinions on the economy. It's the leading economists, the experts, uh, who are saying then? this. Wally. How come then? Oh, hold on. How come I, I heard on one broadcast on ABC and it was never reported in the newspapers, two leading economists, not in the Republican administration, two leading economists came on ABC and said, we are in a minor recession by the beginning of next year. It's going minor, to, it's yeah, going to be over. But the news so media we're in never, the well, the news call, media call it never, never, minor what? It's I like say, saying you're barely pregnant. We're, we're definitely in a recession, minor or not. We're in a god darn recession. Uh, I mean, watch your language. Look at the facts. I mean, car sales are down. Uh, home sales are down. I mean, with this oil, with the price of oil going up. I mean, it's obvious we're in a god darn recession. And obviously, break. And obviously, your IQ is way down. What do you think? I, hold on, Eddie. I say this. The liberal Democratic news media wants to... Hold it. The liberal Democratic news media wants to defeat President George Bush in 1992, and the way they can do that is to undermine him, and yeah, I think the media wants to bring on a, a recession, so they'll have a good excuse media. to see President Bush defeated, and I'll tell you, as long as I'm here on the air, it's not going to happen! I'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Seat. Wally George here, and we have Big Mouth Eddie Goodman here. Hey, 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 you better watch that. Oh, you better watch Eddie. that. You better watch that. I may get mad now. Now, let me say this. You want me to get mad. What, what really makes me mad, Eddie, is you say that the media is not slanted. It is so slanted against Republicans, it's unbelievable the way they, they are trying to portray George Bush as a warmonger because he's going into Saudi Arabia. I say George Bush is a hero, and I say we should salute him. When we annihilate Saddam Hussein. <laughs> okay. But the news media. Wait a minute, hold on, let me say something now. I got dog. Wait. Let me say something. Let me talk. Got dog. Wait I'm a minute. Here. Let me say something, what I'm okay? Saying is, Come on, I'm, hold on. Let me wait, say something. Eddie, hold on, hold on. What I'm saying is, and the news media calls him a warmonger. They and know, he's not, is they he? They know all Okay, who name name this particular newscaster that labeled him a warmonger? Who? Every, name. Give every, me names. I want facts. Up. I'll give you the names. facts. The L.A. Times, the New York Times, every one of them say LA, President on, Bush is pushing us. Every one of them is, is course, pushing into war. All they are, they are just reporting the facts, Wally. If, if the facts hurt, I mean, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, Eddie. But, hey, what I'm saying is, it okay, is. Wait, 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 wait. Let me say, let me say something. Come on. What I'm saying is this. Wait a minute. What I'm saying, Eddie. Wait. wait. The way they slap the news, the old saying, Eddie, is it isn't what you say, it's the way that you say it. And the way they're reporting this thing over in Saudi Arabia is they're trying to portray our great president great. as a warmonger. And what he is is a hero who is trying to stop that dictator rodent, Saddam Hussein, in his tracks. Yeah. Now, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Now, go ahead, go ahead. First of all, I just want to make a comment. First of all, the public and the media is upset because the president hasn't explained what his objective is. I he mean, has explained. What is it? What is it? Is oh, it what is it? What's the objective? Hey, you is know, it for oil or what? Is it for huh? No me, one knows. Let me he, answer you. He let me answer you. He won't he even let me, even let, go in the car. Let me no answer you. Him. Let me answer you. Shoot. He, he says, wait a minute. He says the people don't know. The, the president hasn't explained why we're over there. And you know why? Wait. You know why? why the people don't know it? Because the media never prints what he says. Oh, come on. That is so no, I'll, that's I'll, so I'll, ex 
explain to you. I'll explain to you. Okay, I'll, I'll explain to you. What's the purpose? I, here is the purpose. The President Bush has explained not once, oh, not twice. Explain right now. Okay, I'll explain what to is you. It? The reason, sh hold it. The reason we went over there to begin with is to stop that madman Saddam Hussein already had invaded, taken over Kuwait, massing on the border of Saudi Arabia. We went there to stop him from from, in, from invading Saudi Arabia uh -huh. and taking over the entire Persian Gulf and moving into Israel. And we went over there to force Saddam Hussein, through sanctions or whatever it takes, to withdraw from Kuwait and send home every single hostage. Okay, 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 okay. And, and, wait, and the other reason, and, and the other reason, let, let me give you the whole thing. And the other reason is, is to stop Saddam Hussein from controlling, controlling the flow of oil to the entire free world. Right? Okay, hold up, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me make a comment. Let me make a comment. Okay, first of all, first of all, what are we going, what are we going to do? We're going to police the entire world. That's the job of only the United States. We must police the entire world. If that's the case, how come we didn't, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. How come we didn't do anything when Russia invaded Afghanistan? I mean, what are we going to do? Try to police the whole world? Whenever some, another country invades another country, it's the United States to the rescue? Well, no, I'm telling no, you, no. Eddie, That's we're, not going to happen. Not, we're not discussing that now. We're going to set that in the next segment uh, with our next guest. What we're discussing what? is what we're discussing is the news media and the coverage and, and the slantedness of, of the news media. And getting back to this, this talk of recession, all we hear in the media these days is doom and gloom. But that's, we, what we, that's what we can expect. They talk about, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, Eddie. Hey, hold on, Eddie. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Hold on, Eddie. Hey, that's what it's going to be about in the 90s. You, every welcome news, to the Terror Dome, Eddie, baby. Wait a minute, Eddie. It's going to be rough. On every talk show, in every column, in every newspaper, in every commentary you hear, you hear these liberal screaming idiots saying doom and gloom, uh, war, war, recession. Okay, look at and, the facts. Wait, wait, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. 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 I, wait till I finish. Wait till I finish. The reason, the reason they are they are screaming doom and gloom and recession and war is they want to get the people upset so they will vote President Bush out of that's office. Ridiculous. Okay, that right? that's ridiculous. Okay, doom. Okay, we like. Okay, it may sound like doom and gloom because that's the outlook. That's the future. Look at the look at the facts. We're about to get into this very extremely violent war. We're about to get into that. That's a known fact. For about three weeks. For about three weeks. Okay. Now we had that. Three weeks. That's all we need. Station already. Ready. We're in a recession. We're about to go into war. We had this huge problem with drugs. We had this huge problem with crime. We had this, I mean, we have problems with education. We have problems with gangs. I mean, look at all the problems we have in this country right when, now. When I mean, have you ever... You come out. I mean, the outlook is great. You believe the outlook is great? I when mean, you, now it's not... When do you ever... The outlook when, is bleak. Wait a minute. When do you ever... When do you ever hear the news media talking about the good things, talking about the great things in America, how we are the greatest nation in the entire world. Yeah. When do they ever say that? When do they, when do they ever, when oh, do, on, they, they are, they are even, no, wait a minute, they are even anti-God, they're even hey, trying, God. yes, the, the, the media, the it's news media, God. the liberals, where, where news media, from now? because they, they had, they are, are responsible primarily for driving prayer out of our public schools. God should never have been expelled from our public schools. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. It's all because of the liberal news media. First of all, most of them are atheists. Oh, 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 be quiet, be quiet. First of all, don't tell me to be quiet. Yeah, be quiet. It's, it's my, my show. show. It's my show. Be quiet. Oh, wait. Be shy. It's my show. I told you, I'm ready. at the facts here. Oh, shh, shh. You got to look at the facts. I tell you, right now, it's not exactly uh, peaches and cream in this Wait country. Wait a minute, Eddie. We got a lot of problems we got to deal with. I mean, sure, we have a lot of great things, too. Earth, but that's not saying a lot, because most countries are doing terrible. Just to say we are the best Eddie, country on this earth, Eddie. that's not saying anything. That's like getting a bunch of retarded people out playing basketball and say, well, he's the best. But is, is it any good? Is it any Eddie, good? Eddie. I mean, that's ridiculous. Let me ask you this. You keep, hold it, you keep claiming everything is so terrible. I noticed that you have a good job. You're wearing a good CNR suit oh, and, 
and, and tie. Of course, I mean her. So I mean, you obviously, I'm, I'm looking you obviously, for her. you're doing. Why are you complaining? I'm you got a good as job. A whole, as a whole, the outlook for the entire people is look, it look, it's bleak. It's bleak. I'm talking. About, of course, I'm doing great. I'm intelligent. I'm hardworking. Oh. I'm good looking. Of course, I'm doing great. But I'm saying for you know for the entire population in general, America. I mean, uh, the future is uh, is bleak. All right. The future is bleak. All right. All right. There you go. Hold, hold, hold on. There's the word that we keep hearing from from the liberal news media. The future is bleak. Here's what I say. The future is great, and you are out of here. Yeah. And we're back. While oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. We're back with Hot Seat, Wally George here, and we'll get to our next ludicrous guest in a moment, one of our our regular liberal wimps. We'll get him on in a minute. But first of all, let me remind you people at home, wherever you're watching us across America, uh, be sure to write to me. We do love to get your, your letters. The address is on your screen. By the way, uh, the Wally T-shirt is available, and if you hurry, you can get one in time for Christmas. And we have a member of the studio audience wearing a Wally T-shirt. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Wally wants you. Thank you very much. Only $12, including tax and, and postage and handling, and we'll mail one out to you and be, uh, make your checks payable to Spotlight. And mail it to this address, Wally George, P.O. Box 787, Hollywood, California, 90078. Remember, we're always looking for new victims to, to fry on the hot seat. So if you uh, would like to come down here and debate me on some particular issue, male, female, or whatever you may be, uh, go ahead and write to me. And maybe I'll invite you to come down and debate me on the hot seat. Be sure to include your telephone number. Wally George, P.O. Box 787, <coughs> Hollywood, California, 90078. Now, if you want to come down here to a taping of my hot seat show, if you're in the Southern California area, the numbers are on your screen. We tape the show every Wednesday evening at about 6.30, and then we play it back the following Saturday night. So uh, you can call any day during business hours and reserve your free hot seat tickets. In the 213 area code, it's 464-611111. 4646111. Now get, get ready for the big number. In the 714 area code, it's 999. 999. 999. 999. 999. 999. 999. 999. One more time. 999. 999. Yeah, right on. There you go. <laughs> the world famous number. They know it everywhere. Okay. Okay, now hold it down, gang. It is time to introduce my next guest who supports the Alliance for Survival calling for peace now with Saddam Hussein. Oh, come on. Here he is, the ludicrous Jeff Tulcher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hold the applause, please. Now, Jeff, before we start tonight, Wally, I, I, I picked this up in the store because I thought it was appropriate for this show. Um, get, get a close-up of this if you can. I had to cut off two letters, and I'm sure people at home, if you're smart enough, can figure out what the two letters are. It's an anti-Bush sticker, and it's appropriate oh, for this show. And a lot of you guys can relate to that because uh, no Bush. Get it, guys? Look at this. No Bush. There you go. I got one more. This is a Wally sticker. No bozos. No bozos. Hey, you no know what? Bozos. Hey. Hey, if we were hey, if we were to restrict bozos on this show, you would have been gone a long time ago. Yeah, well, the well, if the, FC, if the FCC would have had any guts, they'd have bozos like you off television, hey. pal. I got news for you. I have news for you. The FC, the FCC chairman, the FCC chairman has my picture hanging in his office right next to the American flag. Yeah, right. He's got your picture as a dartboard. Now hold on. How can you possibly support this ludicrous alliance for survival, uh, calling for peace demonstrations, uh, calling for uh, calling for negotiations That's with right. Saddam? Do you want to negotiate with Saddam Hussein? Uh, certainly. I think the fact. Oh, would you shut up for a second already? Oh, yeah. Jeez. What a word in edgewise here. 
Uh, I, I agree with the Alliance for Survival, Wally, because I don't want to see 18, 19, 20-year-old American troops who are over in the uh, Persian Gulf getting their butts blown off, and that's what you want. Well, I'll tell you, They're going to no, have the uh, blood on your hands. Yeah, I wish they'd ship some of your guys' butts over there. <laughs> The guy who is going over there. That's right. Uh, good. Get hey, him out of here. There's a Marine who is going I over there. Hey, well, well, I hope you go to the front line, then, because I'll tell you, I hey, oh, most of hey, these people, hey, most of hey, these people in this hey, audience hey, don't deserve. Are you condemning? Deserve to be in this country. Are you condemning our armed forces over there? I'm who, not condemning our armed forces. I just don't think we should be there in the first place. Well, I'll this let whole you. Situation hey, is in the next segment, situation. I'll let you come up and, and, and take him on, because I I have news for you. Well, it won't be much of an intellectual oh, match. I have news for you, Jeff. I have news for you, you you stupid, weak-livered wimp. Get on with your, your argument. I have news for you. The great majority of Americans, the great majority of Americans in this country want us to be over in Saddam, over there in Saudi Arabia. The great majority of our armed forces over there want to be there, and they want to kick Saddam Hussein's butt. Well, Wally. All I, can, all I can say to that is, you know, you are a wig-wearing warmonger. You know oh, that, Wally? Yeah, oh, yeah, you and Bush. Serious. You and Bush, you know? You know, they explain something to me. You know, the, the whole reason we're even over there in the Persian Gulf is for economic reasons. No, we're not. Sure it is. No, we're and, not. And if we happen to go to war because of this, our ec our economy is going to drop even lower. I mean, the, the, the job rate's going to drop. You're going to have so many Don't problems. Don't you know. Why is it, Jeff, you liberals in, in the Alliance for Survival saying, call it, saying peace now, peace now. How do you explain the fact that just today, or, or just a couple of days ago, the United Nations Security Council, representing the entire world voted in favor of President Bush giving Saddam Hussein a deadline of January the 15th to get the hell out of Kuwait or we can use military action. Well, how do you explain that? I'll tell you what's, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. How do you explain that? I'm gonna explain it. Answer if me, that, how, why if do that they... happens, if that happens, it's like putting a bully into a corner, Wally. A bully always, you back a bully into a corner, what does he do? He comes out fighting. You're gonna have one million Iraqi troops fighting the 300,000 no, no, people in, our, I, in the desert. Let me answer you, no we're not. We're gonna have one million Iraqi troops dead. Yeah! Well, if that's what you think, if that's, if that's what you think, then you're misconceived, Wally, because- And I'll send you over to count the bodies. What do you think? Yeah, and, and wait, that's a good point. Of the see, Iraqis. You don't, care about, you don't care about American citizens. You, you could care less if 20,000 to 50,000 American troops die. You the don't care. on your hands, you moron. Hey, wait a minute. You don't care. You don't give a rip and rip about those people wait, over you there. Don't, you don't give a rip about those Iraqis uh, who have raped and castrated and, and, I don't and, and what murdered they're doing. The, the, the Kuwaiti citizens. Kuwaiti citizens, wait a minute, Kuwaiti citizens testified before United States senators in this country and one after the other got up there and showed pictures uh, of the horrifying atrocities Saddam Hussein's troops are doing. They are castrating men and blowing their brains out in front of their wives and children. They're raping 13-year-old little girls. And I say, that I alone, don't what they that, do, alone Wally. that alone is worth going over there and bombing them off the face of the earth. I don't condone what Saddam Hussein is doing. I just think there's got to be a diplomatic solution to this. You cannot go into war. I mean, first, what happened in Vietnam? We had so many people die in Vietnam because I'll tell you why. In Germany because in 1945, didn't fight it started the war out. That's, well, okay, in Germany, when we bombed Germany in World War II in 1945, it started out as airstrikes and turned into conventional forces, right? Then in the, the uh, China or the, uh, the China You're War. You're boring me. Hurry up. Come on. I'm giving you some useful knowledge of something you don't have in your notes there. In 1950, in the uh, Korean War, we started out air bombing and went to conventional. And the same thing with Vietnam. When we lost that war, what's going to happen is you're going to start bombing Iraq, and then you're going to have the 350,000 of our forces go in and get their butts blown off because of no, idiots no, like you. No, no, I'll tell you what's, what's going to happen, you little dimwit. <laughs> idiots like you come on television Listen, and tell the public on, lies half the time. Hold on, you poor... You're telling the public hold lies on, half the time, you, you hold moron. Hold on, you, you poor excuse for Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Let me, 
Let me tell you what's going to happen. We are going to go over there wave after wave of and American the bombers. Killed. No, That's exactly American, what's happen. the American Air Force is going to go into Kuwait, and then we're going to go into Iraq, and we're going to eliminate every one of the military fields, every one of the military. You know, wait, I'm not through yet. I'm not through yet. You're, wait, you are wait, stupid. Line, wait till I'm through. You're stupid. You're not. Do you think wait till I'm through. You, wait a minute. Do you think, wait, wait, I'm, I'm not through yet. I'm not. Do you think that Iraq? Do you think that Iraq? I was saying before, do you think that Iraq is going to sit there and let let them people? You will not. You will not interrupt this. me when I'm talking. You will not interrupt me. It's my happen. program. You understand? One more time, and you're out of here. There's people like you. You're going to you're gonna be out of here. Five seconds. You're going to be out of here. Sit down in your chair. Sit down in your chair. I'm tired of you. Now, do you actually think, Wally, that Iraq? Is, it's I'm been talking. Four months. It's been four months. One more word out of you, and you're out of here. It's I'm warning you. Months. I'm warning you. Whoa. I'm warning you. One more word. Now you shut up, you bunch of morons out there. Shut your mouth. It is, it is obvious that this little wimp is a is a, a number one, not only a traitor, but a but a stupid, but a coward who would never serve his country. I'll be right back. with the hot seat show and you know this guy Tulcher and, and the Alliance for Survival and all the other liberal wimps keep saying negotiate 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 with Saddam Hussein there is nothing to negotiate with nothing we can accomplish Saddam Hussein has already stated he will not move he, there is no negotiations he will never never retreat from Kuwait so we have no negotiations the entire world it isn't just us Jeff the entire world is on our side the entire world says Saddam Hussein must, number one, retreat from Kuwait completely. Number two, must reinstate the proper regime in there, the proper government. Must, number three, release all the hostages. He won't do any of that. And so I say, there's nothing to talk about. January 15th, bombs away! Well, you know what? You know what really ticked me off the most, Wally, is that, you know, George Bush took time out of his so-called busy schedule to go over and visit the troops on yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah. And if he was so close, if he was in Saudi Arabia, why didn't he go over and try to set up a neutral site with, with Saddam Hussein and meet on a neutral oh, territory? Sure. Go, go. Bush doesn't give a rip about those why? people either. George and the Bush. Reason he even wait, went over wait there. a minute. Wait, let me talk no, to you. I, I, I'm I answering, talking. I'm no. answering you. You're not going to talk I'm the whole I'm show. It's my problem. I don't care. I, I, wait a minute. I, I said I, that I, I think that... I am answering you. I mean it. I, I am not kidding. I, I mean, I'm not kidding you. Well, I am not kidding time. around. Shoot your big mouth off. Now you listen me. to me, or I'm going to throw your body out of here. Well, answer me then. Don't waste time. I, it's, when are you going to realize? See, you're wasting when time. When are you going to realize this is my program? Answer the if question. If you want to control the show, get your own show. This is my program. Do you understand that? Well, answer the question then. Don't I'm asking you a question. Time. Uh, don't, don't ever try to control my program, or time. you are history. He's an idiot, isn't he? Yeah. Well, you're the idiot. You keep knocking your own chair over. Now, as I was saying, I think I, President Bush I am is the biggest wimp oh, to hit this country. He's out of here. Get him out of here. He's Get the biggest wimp to Get hit this out. country. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Okay. Uh, obviously. Hold on. Let me fix my microphone here. Obviously. The guy is a complete idiot. He has nothing to argue about. So what does he do? He says a lot of horrifyingly ridiculous things. Now, we happen to have, and I'm glad he's here so he won't be interrupted. We happen to have a guy in the audience, and I want to bring him up to talk. Here, wait, here's a guy who, in the United States Marine Corps who is on his way to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Sit down here. Come on up here and sit down. Pull the microphone in over there. Now, now, here's a guy who deserves to sit on that chair. Yeah. Huh? Can I, can I have your name, please? Juan Martinez, sir. Okay. Now, now, Paul, you are in the United States Marines. When are you, when are you going over to Saudi Arabia? 
We'll be going over next month, sir. Now, you are... Now, you see, this idiot, Jeff Tolcher, right. he says we have no right to be over there. What do you think about us being over there? Why do you say we're there, and what do you think we should do? I think we have the right to be over there for the fact to what you say, you know, what they're doing. What they're doing is wrong, and I think we should be able to kick their ass. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this guy back, this, this guy back here has no... This guy has no confidence or what, you know, he has no confidence to us. Coward. He says we're going to get our butt kicked. No, we're going to do the butt kicking. Let me tell you, we're going to do the butt kicking. Yeah, right on. Yeah, right on. Let me tell you something. That guy's not Saddam Hussein. That guy's not, his name's not Saddam Hussein. It's so damn insane. That's yeah, what he is. Yeah, right on. <laughs> He's out of here, man. We're going to take over. Okay, I got a few... Hey. Hey, it's people like you, you see, you see, these are the real Americans. You see, people like Jeff Tolcher love to come out and play tough. And you know why? Do you know why they, they don't want to get involved in things like this? Is because they are too cowardly to stand up for their own country. Yeah! Way to go, Wally. Now, you know what? What Jeff Tolcher refuses to realize, and, and what all of us, sh uh, you know, people like Jeff want to come over and take over the show. Well, I'll tell you, when they do that, hey, yeah, right now, right, right now, hey, he's probably, hey, he's, pr right now, he's probably on his tricycle pedaling home to mommy. <laughs> Can't you just imagine Jeffy is going home saying, Oh, Mommy, Mommy, Wally wouldn't let me talk on the show. Oh. Well, what I was going to, was going to say before he tried to interrupt every point I was trying to try to interrupt me, I won't let that happen. I'm in control here, and I'll always be in control. Yeah! Wally, Wally. I don't need... I don't need guests. I can just sit here for an hour and talk myself. That's right. But the whole thing is, you see, the Secretary of Defense, Richard Cheney, explained, and the media once again played it about this much in the newspaper. You, you guys probably haven't even heard it yet. The Secretary of Defense, Dick Cheney, revealed a couple of days ago that in about a year's, in about one year's time, Saddam Hussein will have nuclear weapons at his disposal, which he will use against us. Why do you think he's dragging his feet? Why do you think he wants to stall, 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 and say, we'll give the, the, the uh, hostages out a little bit of a time? Why? Because he wants us to wait until he has nuclear weapons that he can aim at us. I say, do we want to fight him now when he isn't that strong, or do we want to wait until he has the nuclear weapons? I say, the time to strike now. is right now! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let me make a prediction. What's your first name again? Juan. Juan, let me make a prediction to you and, and to all the other guys and, and women over there serving in Saudi Arabia. We are going to go in there, and I'll tell you, in a matter of weeks, we're going to win and bring all of our people home. Good night, everybody.